Hey everybody, sorry for the floppy video and what is this? And the shaky video and all that. Um, going back over to the RV just to let you know exactly what I'm doing here. I just got a call. I found a, an RV tech that has a mobile service. And ironically, they were probably less than five miles from where I'm storing this. He just called me and told me he'd be over there in about a half an hour. He was at another service call. I was second on the list today. And the ironic thing was, everybody else, and this could be good news, bad news, I'm not sure, <laughs> is everybody else I called, and I did call a couple of other five-star rating companies, and both of them, or all of them, were um, two to four weeks out. And I didn't want to wait that long unless I have to. Because I've, I've got a plan here. So, I called this company, and ironically, I got this company's name and everything from... Um, actually a YouTube advertisement that popped up on my channel and then it was talking about it being in Oxford which is not too far from where my camper's at and I asked Sue about it and she said oh yeah she said they're on 44 she said you've seen them on the right there with the uh, campers and stuff sitting out and I said you know I did see that place but I didn't put two and two together I guess uh, so I called them to see if they had a mobile service uh, and actually, I can take the camper down there, truthfully. I mean, it's, it's not that far away. It's just getting there is kind of a pain. And uh, anyway, I called and she said, yeah, we do have a mobile service. And I told her what my problem was. And she said, no problem. We can take care of it. So anyway, he called me just now and um, said he'd be there in a half an hour. And I told him, you know, no big deal because it'd take me at least 20 minutes to get there. Hopefully this guy will be able to figure that uh, generating power thing out real quick. So here's their price, just so you'll know up front. It's a $79 service call to show up. Uh, I think that's a bit high, but everything right now in the RV business is high because they can. That's what it boils down to, they can. $159.99. Right, $159? $159 an hour. So as you can see, I don't want him playing around very much. I'm interested in getting this thing done at $159 an hour. Yes, here's the ironic thing about this, this whole thing. Is that uh, literally, he could work over here for one hour and say, I can't figure it out. And I'm going to owe these people... Um, 240 bucks <laughs> for nothing this, that's the thing that really gets me about this service call stuff I don't mind the $79 I guess to show up because I don't know where he's at and, you know that's all averaged in it he could be 5 miles down the road or he could be 50 miles down the road so they average that service call thing out to handle the gas and everything so I'm okay with that $159 an hour, mm, has it really gotten that bad? Maybe it has, but uh, is this a good thing or a bad thing? The fact is I called them last uh, Friday, which today's Monday. I know on the videos you can't tell, but today's Monday. I called them, what, two, three days ago, and she told me they could, they could uh, work me in Monday afternoon. Everybody else is two to four weeks out. These people can work me in Monday afternoon. Now that's a sign of one or two things. Either it's a, a good company and they got enough people to handle the workload, hopefully, I don't think so, or uh, the company isn't well enough, uh, maybe there's several, three, maybe the company's not well enough known to have people calling them yet and, and backing up. Oh, darn, I forgot my billfold too. Shoot. See, I'm in a bigger hurry and I forgot my billfold. My driver's license and everything's in my billfold. That's not good. I did bring the checkbook though to pay these guys. 
But if he tells me they take credit card only, we got a problem. I forgot my billfold. Darn it. So anyway, um, he called me a while ago and said he's there or going to be there in a half an hour. And I said, well, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And so that's where I'm headed. I'm headed over there to uh, see about getting this thing worked out. So I'm going to lay this phone down and pay attention to what I'm doing. Well, he's here. Seems like a nice guy. Got a, you know, mobile tech truck. We're just out here roaming around trying to do a little video and who knows how much I'll have to edit out. I see some new stuff in here. This travel trailer right here, this is new. Looks like it's been sitting outside somewhere, as dirty as it is. It's got that green mold stuff growing on it. See That's the stuff I keep telling people in the villages you have to have your house washed. That stuff right there will grow on the side of your house. I have my house washed twice a year. It's not expensive at all. More more than glad to pay. It's like $69 every six months. And they clean the whole house with this chemical kind of spray thing and uh, it's uh, low pressure and I got no problem with it. I've had them for years and they do a great job. This unit right here looks fairly new. I don't think I've seen this one here either. I see a sticker still on the windshield, so either it's brand new or very good used, one or the other. Looks nice. I like the way on these newer ones, the way the caps now is one piece all the way back there. Years ago, the older ones were the cheaper ones. If you're gonna buy an RV, trust me, don't buy the RV that has these front end, it's, um, I don't know what they call that, open seal, something like that. I'm trying to see if I can see one. They've pretty much, over the years, done away with that. But if you buy an older one, they, they still have that old way of sealing up. And it's not a matter of how much it's going to leak. It's just a matter of when it's going to leak. And on them older ones, that's where it usually gets wet and things start rottening out first. Here's another one. See, they, they've all done away with that, that edge. That guy didn't even find it. Well, let's use this as an example. Probably a poor example, but it's an example. See this travel trailer here? See this seal right here goes up. Walls are here. This is here, and here's how they they make the, the corners waterproof. They probably put some kind of sealant behind that, and they put that on there. It's just a matter of time that's going to fail, guarantee. It's kind of an unusual looking little motorhome here. What kind is this? It's got Chevrolet hubcaps, but I guess I don't mean anything, right? Well, 3500 Huh. It's kind of neat looking. Looks like an older one, but it's kind of neat looking. Trail light. Huh. Oh well. I'm just kind of moseying around because I don't want to bother the guy while he's working. At $159 an hour, I don't want to distract him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, the long and short of the generator is this. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know anything. I know, like they say, the old saying, I know just enough to get me in trouble. I, uh, he checked everything out. Everything checks out fine. He even checked the plug, you know, where I have to manually have to plug my camper into a plug that goes to the generator. And I get nothing. He checked that plug. 
And he said, I have electricity there. I said, well, there's nothing inside that works. When I plug it in, I don't understand. He said, but I have an open neutral. And he, and he showed me. He put his meters in that plug, and I had 120 volts or 123 volts or whatever it was on one side of the plug. On the other side of the plug, I only had like, I want to say... 12 volts or 2 volts. I don't remember the number. It was a very small number. And he said, uh, that means you got an open neutral. I said, I don't understand. What's a neutral? Is that a ground? And he said, well, it's kind of like a ground for the ground. He said, it doesn't go into the ground like a ground would or it doesn't ground like to the chassis or nothing like that. And he was trying to explain to me exactly what that was. The more he tried to explain, it's like doctor talk. I, I told him several, so I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I said, can we cut the wire and just run a new wire and just bypass it? Because it maybe broke somewhere. Let's just bypass it. He said, well, we can't really do that. And he explained why. Uh, uh, computer boxes and stuff like that in the generator, of course. Computer boxes. More computer boxes. So now they're saying, just bring it over to the shop because they're saying they got to take the generator out. And they have to... Uh, diagnose whatever's going on is he said it has to be internal we have to diagnose it well as he was going through some more checks checking as many wires as he could in the generator itself lo and behold he found a mouse nest shoved inside the generator well it's outside the generator but it was like back behind the carburetor and stuff and he said that could be the problem he said a mouse may have uh, been chewing on a wire in there I said well that has to be an old mouse nest because this generator, uh, the, the problem I'm having with the generator didn't happen until I was out in the desert. So for three or four weeks, as we, what is this guy stopping for? See how people are? This is why I said people have got to be very careful around here. There's no, there's no stop sign to get into a roundabout unless there's tra traffic in it. There was no traffic. But, uh, he said they could have chewed on a wire, maybe halfway through the wire, me driving out there, bouncing around, using the generator every day like I did. It could have, uh, the wire just could have just wore out and then snapped. Okay. So now I got to take the RV. That was $206, by the way, to diagnose this far. They wanted me to take the RV over to the shop. I called them. They said bring it over anytime. It's okay. This mechanic is telling me generally when they drop generators and have to work on them within a day, he said two max, uh, it's done and, they, and I, I can come pick it up. We'll see. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm leery about this because I've been through this before and it was just, they just nickel dime me to death on the other one. $400 for this, well we gotta order a part. $500 to install a part. Well, that didn't work. Oh, well, that's because there's something else wrong. We got to, we, and it went on and on and on. By the end of it, the generator wouldn't even run. So, I, I, and I told this guy, I said, I'm, I'm a little leery. But he said, uh, no, he said, you'll be fine. He says, take it over there. We can get it out and work on it and put it on the bench and whatever I got to do to it. So, that's the long and short. That's what we're going to do next. I'm heading home because my wife's going to have to follow me over there to to get my butt back to the house so I can drop this thing off. I don't know if I'm going to do it today or tomorrow because it's, I don't even know what time it is. Probably around 5 o'clock, I guess, because of the rush. And um, take this thing over there and hope for the best. That being said, I'm going to get out of here. And I'll see you all on the other side.